Hello everyone, okay so in this video we are going to be looking at graphs of cubic and higher order polynomials. So we're going to be learning about root behaviour, so i.e. like um, if it has real roots, complex roots, repeated roots etc what that looks like. We are also going to be looking at the shape of graphs, like so if we were given a polynomial in its factored form would we be able to sketch it? And then finally, we are going to be looking at can we create the function or polynomial of a graph just from looking at said graph. So, um, so the maximum number. So just to recall something. So we know the maximum number of distinct roots that a polynomial can have is the same as its degree. So i.e. a quadratic will have two solutions or two roots. A cubic will have three roots. A polynomial to the power of four will have four roots, etc. So this just to kind of go off of the nature of roots again. But distinct real roots. At distinct real roots, the graph will cross the x-axis. So if it has distinct or different real roots, it crosses the x-axis. So here it has one, two, three. It has three real distinct roots here. So if a so if a polynomial has distinct real roots, this one looks like it crosses the x-axis. If it has complex roots or no real solutions, it does not cross the x-axis. So we remember this from nature of roots. If it does have if it has no real roots, it does not cross the x-axis. And then let's look at repeated roots here. So if a root is repeated an even number of times. Right, so say you have x equals 4, right? So let's say I have x minus 4 squared. So I have two solutions to this. It's x equals 4, x equals 4. So my two solutions are x equals 4. So it is repeated an even number of times. So it's repeated twice. So x equals 4 is repeated twice. So to draw that on the graph, when we have a root that's repeated and it's an and it, it's repeated an even number of times, it just touches, right? So it goes down and it just touches x equals four and then it bounces back up. Now, if it's repeated an odd number of times, that's when it gets a little bit different. If it's repeated an odd number of times, so let's say here, um, I have x minus four cubed. So my two solutions, my three solutions, I should say. My three solutions are x equals 4, x equals 4, x equals 4. So it's repeated three times. So if it's repeated an odd number of times, so my graph goes up, it will hit x equals 4. But instead of just touching it and coming back down, it kind of goes up, it touches it, it kind of lays flat on it for like a little tiny bit. And then it goes and crosses the x-axis, right? So, even number multiplicity. So, if it's repeated an even number of times, it just touches the graph. If it's repeated an odd number of times, it kind of just glides on the point and then crosses the x-axis. So, now, finally, let's look at the shape of graphs. So these are all going to come together now in a minute when we do the examples. So shapes of graphs. So we need to be aware um, of what the equation of a polynomial tells us about the shape of graphs. We are particularly interested in describing the arms of the curve. So the so the two arms of the curve. So like the little, like these things, you know, the arms, like the ends of my curves. So. Um, degree. So if the degree of the polynomial is even, so if the degree of the polynomial is even, so if the degree is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc., both arms will point up, right? If it's even, both arms will point up. If it's odd, if the, if the degree of the polynomial is odd, odd one will point up and one will point down and then our leading coefficient will then tell us 
where which where they are pointing right so the de degree tells us the direction both of the arms are going are the boat going up or are the boat going opposite directions and then when i go to look in there in a second the leading coefficient or if it's a positive or negative polynomial uh, that will tell us the direction. Are both arms going up? Are they both going down? Is this one going up? This one going down? Etc. Etc. So the leading coefficient. So if the leading coefficient is positive, the right arm points up. So if the leading coefficient is positive, the right arm points upwards. And if the leading coefficient is negative, the right arm points downwards. That is always true. So if I have a quadratic, or maybe a, let's say a polynomial degree four, the boat gonna point up. So it'd be one, two, three, four. So the boat point up, but more importantly, the right one points up, right? So that could look in multiple different ways. So here's a little fun little thing I used to remember. So remember, positive people go to heaven, negative people go to hell, you know what I mean? So positive people, i.e. functions, they point towards heaven, Negative people slash functions go to hell, right? So positive point up, negative point down. So right, okay. So let's let's sketch some functions here. So sketch the function x minus two times x minus three all to be squared times x minus four. So let's sketch this function. So my roots of this function is going to be x equals two x equals 3, but see the squared here, that means it's repeated twice. So if x equals 3, x equals 3, and then finally x equals 4. My leading coefficient, right, so it's the sign in front of my factorised expression here, or my function. It is positive, right, it doesn't have a negative, so therefore it's positive. So it's positive, that means right arm is pointing upwards. What is going to be the degree of this polynomial? So the degree... It's got to be how many roots do I have? One, two, three, four. So it's going to be four. So both arms are pointing the same direction. It is positive. So I know my function is going to have both arms pointing upwards. So let's kind of sketch this out. So remember, this asking for a sketch. Right, they're not asking you to actually kind of graph this function, they're asking you to sketch it. So be as rough as you want. So um it's degree four and it's positive, so both arms are gonna be pointing upwards. So uh let's see, so I'm gonna be starting from up here and coming down. So I cross through x minus two here. I'm gonna go back up. Then I'm hitting x equals 3 twice. So the multiplicity is even. So I just touch the graph. I go back down. Then I'm going to be coming back up and crossing through x equals 4. And that's it. I've sketched my graph. Just looking, just looking for a sketch. That's it. Just looking for a sketch. This one here. My roots are going to be x equals 2, x equals 3, and then x equals 5. But it appears three times. So x equals 5, x equals 5, x equals 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my degree is 5. My leading coefficient is negative. So that means my right arm is going to point downwards and then my other arm is going to be pointing upwards so one two three four five so my graph is roughly going to look like something like this so again we're just sketching we're just sketching so i'm gonna say that's two that's three this is five, right? So I'm gonna be starting from the top here. I'm going through x is two. I'm going through x is three. Then I'm coming back down now. I have an odd multiplicity of x equals five. So remember, it's just going to 
So maybe we should do this in a different color, shall we? So it goes through axis two, goes through axis three, going up because the multiple multiplicity is only one. The power of x minus five is three, so the multiplicity is odd. And remember, if I have a repeated root an odd number of times, I just touch the root and kind of glide for a minute, and then I go back down. And that's it. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because, looky here, so I have one, two, three, four, five roots. So it's degree five. My left arm is pointing up, my right arm is pointing down. And that's it. So I know I am correct. So, let's do some questions. So, this one is from the 2014 Leaving Cert paper. Uh, paper 1, question 1. Uh, the graph of a cuba function fx cuts the x-axis at x minus 3, x minus 1, x equals 2, and the y-axis at 0, minus, zero minus 6. Uh, sketch the graph of the function. So just sketch. So when it says sketch, it just means roughly, right? We can be rough with it. We don't have to be actually pinpoint accurate. So, uh, draw out my little axes here. So my roots are going to be x is equal to 3, x is equal to 1, and, oh sorry, x equals minus 3, x is minus 1, and x equals 2. So minus 3, minus 1, 2. So this is going to be a cubic, because it has three roots, so the degree is going to equal 3, right, and then it doesn't really tell me anything about the leading coefficient, so I'm just going to assume it's positive, right? Uh, so let's do it out here. So sketch the graph of the function. So it's cubic, so one goes up, one goes down, or, well, the arm's going opposite directions anyway, but I'm just going to assume it's positive, right, and see if that works. And then we have to cut the y-axis at 0, minus 6. So there's minus 6 there. Let's just say we have to cut there. Okay, let's try this out. So, it's three, minus 3, goes through minus 1, goes through minus 6, and that goes back up through minus 2. Right, so that actually worked, right? So, can you imagine if I tried to use a negative leading coefficient here? Right. If I use a negative leading coefficient, I don't think I would actually be able to hit the x is minus three. So let me just let's try that. The x is minus six. Right. So that's minus three, minus one, two. If I use a negative leading coefficient here, like this, and I went like this. Yes. Yeah, see, I'd be crossing the y-axis positively. So no way, no way I'd be able to hit um uh, the minus six down here. So that is how we sketch our graph correctly there. Always do your graphs in pencil. Don't think I have to tell you, but do do that. Right. Verify that the function can be written as x to the power of three plus two x squared minus five x minus six. So we just need to write all my roots as factors. So it'd be x plus three times x plus one times x minus 2. If we multiply that out, I'm going to have x squared plus 4x plus 3 times x minus 2. x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x minus 2x squared minus 8x minus 6. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 and would you look at that it does equal it bada boom bada bing i verified just multiply it bada boom bada bing easy peasy lemon squeezy right here's one now draw a sketch of the following function x plus 2 to the power of 3 x minus 5 x minus 2 to the power of 2 so my leading coefficient is positive so this is going to be positive graph gorge and my degree is 3 one, two, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six roots. So my degree 
is equal to six. It is positive leading. So that means both arms are pointing in the same direction. So degree six means both arms are pointing in the same direction. The positive meaning they're both going to be pointing upwards because positive people go to heaven. So my function is going to roughly look something like one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to roughly look something like that. But let's test it out here. So my roots are x equals minus two. x equals minus 2, x equals minus 2, x equals minus 2, x is equal to 5, x is equal to 2, x is equal to 2. So sketch it out here. Oh, no. What was it? Right. Bing. Bong. So that's minus 2, this is 2, and this is 5. Right? So I'm going to be starting upwards. Um, I hit x is minus 2 three times. So I come downwards. Remember, odd multiplicity. So it's repeated an odd number of times. So I'm not just bouncing off and going back up. I'm hitting off it, gliding for a second, and then going down. Then I'm coming back up. I'm my next root here is x equals two. And that is repeated twice. Right, that is repeated twice. So I'm gonna go up and hit the graph. But remember the multiplicity is even, so it's just gonna just gonna touch the graph, go back down, and then finally it passes through x is equal to five once. And there we go, there's my graph sorted so i know i'm correct because uh both arms are pointing upwards so both arms are pointing the same direction so my degree is correct and then they're both pointing upwards so my leading coefficient is correct and then i have all my roots sorted there gorge right another one here x is minus four so squared so x is equal to four x is equal to four is two roots x plus five cubed so be x is equal to minus 5, x is equal to minus 5, x is equal to minus 5. And I'm finding out x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 2. So what's my degree here? My degree is, well, how many roots do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So my degree is 7. That means they're going opposite directions. My arms of my graphs are going opposite directions. And then my leading coefficient is positive so that means my right arm is going up and my left arm is pointing down so one two three four five six seven all right so my graph is roughly gonna look like something like this let's sketch it out so remember sketch we don't have to be that accurate here so um, I'm going to be starting off here, so it'll be minus 5, 2, and then I have 4 here. So, I'm starting downwards, and I'm hitting x is minus 5 three times. So, starting downwards, odd multiplicities, repeating odd number of times. So, I just hit the graph here, and I keep going up, like this. Then I'm coming back down, and I'm going to kiss the x is equal to 2 because it appears twice so it just touches it da -da ding goes up and I'm going back down and I'm just mwah, kissing x is equal to 4 and then it's coming back up and there we go there's a sketch of that graph there right let's look at this one here so I have x is equal to minus 3 x is equal to minus 3 x is equal to 5, x is equal to 6, oh sorry, x is equal to 5, x is equal to 5 two times, and I have x is equal to 6, x is equal to 6, x is equal to 6. So my degree is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. My degree is 7. It is a negative leading coefficient, therefore my graph is going to be pointing 
it's going to be left upwards and it's going to be pointing downwards. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. So there you go. So my graph is going to look something like this. So let's sketch it out. So uh, my lowest one here is minus three, five, six, right? And again, I'm just sketching it out. I'm not really focusing too much on the schematics of it. Um, right. So I'm starting upwards and I'm hitting X's minus three twice. So I'm going down, just kissing it, just touching it, going up. Ding, 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 ding. Coming back down again, I'm just touching. X is equal to five. And then finally I'm coming down and I'm hitting X equal to six three times. So all the multiplicity. So I go through the graph here. And that's it, bada boom, bada bing. Fine. So that was us sketching out some graphs. So now let's look at finding equations of polynomials from roots and a given point, right? So sometimes we're given a graph and we're given all the roots on the graph and then we're given one point on the graph. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can use the information on roots and shapes from above to find the expression of given polynomials from the graph. So why do we need to do this? So there are an infinitely many functions that have the same roots right there's infinitely many but we want to pinpoint it down to the exact one that's why we need the one point so we look at the graph and write down all of the factors and then we multiply the roots by a constant a and then we substitute a known point in to that factorized form of that polynomial and then we solve for a and that is all we're looking for so let's look at this one here. Find the expression of the polynomial in each of the graphs. So here I have one, two, three. I have three distinct roots. So cross is at x is minus three, x is minus one, and x is two. And it intercepts at point zero minus six. So my, my factors are x plus three times x plus one times x minus two. And then what I need to do is, I need to multiply that by some constant a. And that is my function fx. Now, what I do is I sub in zero minus six. When x is zero, my function's equal to six. So a equals zero plus three. Zero plus one. Zero minus two is equal to minus six. I have a times three times one times minus two, minus six. A times minus six equals minus six. So a is going to equal to one. So my function f of x is just going to be equal to one times x plus three times x plus one, x minus two. We don't need to expand it unless it says so, but it's just easier to leave it in its factored form like this. Gorge. Right, let's look at this one here. Let's look at my roots. So, um, I see here it crosses at x equals minus 1, x equals 1, and then looky here, it kisses the x-axis, just touches the x-axis. So therefore, this is going to be a repeated root. So, uh, I'm going to say this is um, x it's just repeated twice. So f of x equals, so x plus one times x minus one times x minus two squared because it touches it. Now I'm gonna multiply all that by a constant a. A point that's given on my graph is zero four. So when x is zero, what, and my function is equal to four, so four is equal to a times 
0 plus 1, 0 minus 1, 0 minus 2 squared. 4 is equal to a times 1 times minus 1 times minus 2 squared. 4 is equal to a times 1 times minus 1 times 4. 4 is equal to a times minus 4. a is going to equal to minus 1. So I have a negative leading coefficient, which makes sense. So f of x is going to be equal to then minus x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 2 squared. And that's it. Right, let's do two examples and then we are finito. So, there's an exam style question here. The graph of the polynomial ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is given below. Find the value of the constants a, b, c, and d. So we're going to be asked to find this function in its um, factorised form, and then we're going to be asked to multiply out it. So it's a cubic, so I have three roots, so let's double check. Oh, yes, I do. So one of my roots here is going to be uh, x is equal to minus 4. And then it touches... Again here, going back here, it touches, it touches minus 1 here twice. So, I'm going to have here, f of x, going to be equal to, so multiply everything by a. So I'm going to have x plus 4 times x plus 1 squared. And then... I have my point zero minus two. <clears throat> so my function equals to minus two when x equals zero. So zero plus four, zero plus one squared minus two equals a times four times one squared minus two equals a times four. A is gonna equal to minus a half. Gorge. So f of x equals minus a half times x plus 4, x plus 1 squared. So f of x equals a half minus a half times x plus 4 times, this is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. So f of x is going to be equal to minus a half times x cubed plus 2x squared and x times 1 is x plus 4x squared plus 8x plus 4 x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x plus 4. Multiplying the half, I'm going to have minus a half x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4.5x minus 2. Now it's asking us here, find the constants a, b, c and d. <clears throat> So, if my function is in this form here, what is A, B, C, and D? So, go back to my answer here. So, A, X cubed plus B, X squared plus C, X plus D. So, A is going to equal to minus a half. B is going to equal to minus 3, C is going to equal to minus 4.5, and D is going to be equal to minus 2. And that is my solution there. Right, okay, so the last question here. Uh, the graph of the function a x to the power of 4 plus b x cubed plus c x squared plus d x plus e is given below. Find the values of the constants a, b, c, and d and e. So let's look at my graph here. So it's going to have four roots. So see here, it 
has an odd multiplicity at x um, is minus 2. So the root, so the factor for that is going to be x plus 2 cubed. And then here it passes at x equals 3. So my factored form is going to be, so I have to multiply it by a constant a. So it's going to be x plus 2 cubed times x minus 3. So it passed the point zero three. So when x is zero, y f of x is equal to three. So three is equal to a times zero plus two cubed zero minus three. Three is equal to a times two cubed times minus three. Three is equal to a times minus twenty four. So a is going to equal minus one eighth. So a is equal to minus one eighth. So I have f of x equals minus one eighth times x plus two cubed times x minus three. Multiply this out. Just ask me to here. So x plus two cubed. That is going to expand out to. Double check here. X plus. Mm -hmm. That is going to expand out to x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. X minus 3. And then when you multiply all of that by x minus 3, you are going to get, so minus 1 eighth times x to the power of 4 plus 3x cubed minus 6x squared minus 28x minus 24. Finally, then multiply into 1 eighth, so minus 1 eighth x to the power of 4 minus three eighths x cubed plus six over eight which breaks down to three quarters x squared mm, plus 28 over eight that breaks down to positive seven over two x and then minus 1 eighth times minus 24 is going to be positive 3. So a x to the power of 4 plus b x cubed plus c x squared plus d x plus e. a is going to equal minus 1 eighth b is going to equal minus 3 eighths c is going to equal 3 quarters D is equal to 7 over 2, and E is going to be equal to 3. Alright, now that's a hard one. They probably won't ask you to do all of that, but so what's the harm? Anyway, right, that's this section done. Uh, I hope it was some help, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.